chapter 27, starting at verse number 27. I'm just going to look through a little bit here before we um, gather in for uh, communion tonight. The Bible says that the, uh, the soldiers, or the Roman soldiers, of the governor took Jesus into the common hall and they gathered unto him a whole band of soldiers. Uh, that is speaking of uh, a cohort around 200 soldiers. So they've gathered in Jesus and 200 soldiers. And uh, the Bible says that they stripped him. No, when they stripped him, they didn't take him down to having no garments. They took his outer garments off. His inner garments were left on. The Bible says they put upon him a scarlet robe. When we look at what this really means, it's probably an old robe that was from Herod or an old robe from a, 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 some cast off garment from some officer that was wore out and they put it upon Jesus. They took the things that, that, that was for no good. You know, we may think of it as being just things that were given away because they were wore out holes, things that were no longer any, any good. The Bible says that they planted a, a, a crown of thorns. Uh, it was known as a victor's crown. And uh, they put it upon his head. The victor's crown, the victor's thorns, uh, they, they weren't like we think about our thorns that maybe would grow up on a rose bush, uh, uh, whether common or wild rose bush, or even that of just maybe a, 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 a bush that we think about, but more like crabapple trees. And even more so, if you're familiar with crabapple trees, even more so the spikes given into the upward of six inches. That's a, that's a very big spike. And, uh, you know, they can, they can pierce. I remember one time as a child, uh, I must have been playing underneath the crabapple tree. And, and uh, in my knee, I woke up and it was all swollen. And you could see that there was something there and I had a very difficult time getting it out. In fact, we were at the last straw of, of needing to go and get some medical attention to get it out. And all of a sudden, it popped out and there was a, a, a crabapple uh, thorn in my leg about this long in my knee. But it, it, it went in easily. Uh, uh, I didn't even notice it, uh, uh, but, 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 but the result of it uh, uh, long term affected me. Now granted, Jesus was going to know about these crown of thorns being placed upon his head, but I want you to think of the repercussions of that, that even his head swelled from those thorns that went, went in. So we think about him being beaten beyond all recognition. We think about the crown of thorns upon his head, and even the swelling that's happening in his head and, and his facial features beyond all recognition. That's what sin does. It mires what God makes. But Jesus took upon him all sin so that you and I may be free from sin. And the Bible says, and they put it upon his head. The word from crown, for crown here is Stephanos, which means a victor's crown. And they did it in shame and mockery as they put it upon Jesus' head. But what they didn't know was this crown was going to give the ultimate victory. The shame, the reproach for the Craig, but yet the reality, Sister Linda, that he wears the victor's crown. He reigns victorious. They spit upon him, they beat him, they treated him unjustly, they were cruel and they were rude, they were ignorant in every type of way. But Brother Doug, he still won. And he still wins. The Bible says, and they put a reed in his hand, and they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. I need to tell you that these soldiers bowed before him and said, Hail, King of the Jews. But Sister Beth, there's coming a day on the uh, 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 on, on that day of uh, 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 of, of, of the, the, the great white throne judgment that these same soldiers, if they didn't make things right with God, they will once again bow their knee, but it will not be in mockery and, 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 and poking fun, but it will be in a reality that he is King of Kings 
kings, and he is Lord of lords. The Bible says when they spit upon him and they took the reed and smote uh, him on the head, if it wasn't already bad enough that they had created this, this victor's crown and placed upon him and, 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 and put it down upon his head, now they take a reed and they beat him on the head and they put the crown of thorns deeper into his skull. And after they mocked and had mocked him, they took the robe off from him and put his own raiment on him. And they led him away to crucify him. And as they came out on the way to Calvary, that Via Della Rosa, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name, and they compelled to bear his cross. Now, some folks have different ideas. We've seen it portrayed different ways. But some feel like it was just the cross beam of the cross, just one. Known by many as the Petabellum. Or the Petabulum, I'm sorry. The Petabulum would just be one beam. That itself weighing around 100 pounds. But this Jesus, our Savior, our Lord, who was beaten and treated so badly even at the age of 33 in his prime with Craig couldn't bear the 100 pounds. So he was constrained to bear the cross. And when they came to the place called Golgotha, that is to say the place of the skull. It's interesting when we look at Golgotha, there is much to be said. The place of the skull, the way it looked. But some tradition says this. That here it is. That at Golgotha. That Adam was buried. Adam buried at Golgotha. The first Adam fell into sin. The first Adam didn't have a way to redeem himself, but God sent a second Adam. Amen. And where the first Adam was buried, the second Adam would die, and he would return to life, and he would give life to all who died in faith. Amen. And would give hope to all who ever lived that when they die, amen, they wouldn't die as others, amen, with no hope, but they would die with a hope. They wouldn't die uh, 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 just physically. Uh, uh, they would die just physically, not spiritually uh, as well. Amen. There would be hope given here at Golgotha. The Bible says, and they gave him vinegar to uh, 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 to drink mingled with gall. And when they had uh, when he had tasted thereof, he he could uh, uh, would not drink. And they crucified him and parted his garments, casting lots, that it might be fulfilled that which was spoken by the prophet. The Bible says, in verse number thirty-seven, <laughs> over his head accusations. Accusations, this is the crime. This is the reason why he died. Because he said, I am Jesus, King of the Jews. Never was there a death like this, Brother Rick. Never has anyone ever been crucified for such an accusation. But his words were true. I am Jesus, King of the Jews. The Bible says that there are two thieves crucified with him, one on the right and one on the left. And those who passed by, that re, they, they reviled, reviled, reviled him, wagging their heads and saying, You who destroyed this temple and built it uh, in three days, Save yourself. See, there's a lot of religious people, Brother Doug, who came by. Religion will never do anything for anybody. But it's an experience. I'll say it again. Religion will never do anything for anybody. Religion can't deliver from the bondage of sin and set free. 
Religion cannot allow the blood of Jesus to wash and the power of the Holy Spirit to indwell in lives. The Holy Ghost that changes lives and gives victory over sin. Amen. And so uh, the Bible says uh, that uh, if you be the Son of God, come down and save yourself from the cross. If He would have come down from the cross, you and I would not be saved tonight. So He chose to save. The Bible says, Likewise also the chief priests mocking Him and the scribes and the elders. He saved the others. Himself He cannot save. If He is King of Israel, let Him come down from the cross and, and, and we will believe. Not only were they blasphemers, but they were liars. They would not have believed if He would have came down. Because they did not believe when He was raised from the dead. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now. The Bible says in verse number 45 about the sixth hour that there was darkness all over the land. I just want to say this. I know that some folks may say, well, it's an eclipse. The sun was covered. The moon was covered. You know what happened? Because God could not bear to see His only begotten Son hang on the cross. Amen. And that's why it got dark. Amen. The darkness that God could not look upon His Son because He could not stand to bear to see the sin of the penalty of the world upon His only begotten Son. Can you imagine God the Father as He has to look away because He cannot stand to see the penalty of sin upon His Son? We know this morning I talked about shame. We know about guilt. Each one of us knows what it's like to sin. And most of us here uh, uh, this evening probably have not committed gross acts of sin, although sin is sin. Amen. Can you imagine not only our sins, but the sins of all the world and all humanity down through the ages that the Son of God takes upon Himself the penalty of sin. The Father can't bear to look. And all of a sudden, the Bible says about the ninth hour, with a loud voice. I think this is interesting. With a loud voice. It wasn't weak. It wasn't that, 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 that the cross killed Jesus. Amen. He had a loud voice. But it wasn't. He chose to die the death he died because of the penalty of sin as he cried out Eli Eli lama sabathana my God my God why hast thou forsaken me he knew that the father couldn't look upon him it wasn't that he was saying it and reviled toward God but he was saying it that we may understand the death of what he bore as he bore sin upon himself Some of them that stood there, they misunderstood. They thought he called for Elijah. The Bible says that as he gave up the ghost, the veil of the temple, it was rent in twain from top to bottom. Signifying this is only a thing that God can do. It wasn't bottom to top. It wasn't man to God. But it was top to bottom. It was God to man. That because of the work of my Son upon the cross, you may enter into a holy place with me. But I just want to tell you something that most often here on Sunday nights, and I feel the presence of God here tonight, what we sense and what we experience is because of Jesus Christ in Calvary. Because God the Father sent His only begotten Son. And God says the work is finished. Isn't it amazing, Brother Doug, right before that with a loud voice, it wasn't awake. Hardly could speak. I'm under the pressure of the cross. But it was with a loud voice that he cried out, Eli, Eli, Mama, Sabathani. 
And then later he would cry out, It is finished. Father, the work that you sent me to do, it is finished. And it's not the cross that has killed me. Amen. It's not the cross that has taken my life. But I gladly lay my life down for all of humanity because the Father needed someone, amen, to bridge the gap between Him and humanity. And He searched through all of earth and couldn't find anybody. He searched through heaven. And I was the one who could be the spotless Lamb of God without blemish. And so I came and I gave myself. And I'm giving all. I'm laying down my life. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Amen. Even when we were an enemy, he desired a friendship and he gave his life for us. The earthquake and the rocks ran and the graves were open and many bodies of saints would slept the soul sleep. Uh, not necessarily soul sleep, uh, but, but, but rather the body of, bodies of the sainted dead. Uh, 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 and they came out of the grave after the resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. The Bible says that the centurion who was watching this, he looked as a bystander and he said, Truly, 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 certainly, this was the Son of God. More familiar with that scene as they take his body down. It was coming evening. Close to sunset, Passover and Sabbath. And there came a rich man named Armathea, named Joseph, who was also himself was Jesus' disciple. And he went to Jesus, and he went to Pilate and begged the body of Jesus. And Pilate commanded the body to be delivered. And Joseph, when he had taken the body, he wrapped it in clean linen cloth. See, this was the sacrifice. It was a sacrifice that was to be used by God in order to redeem Adam's fallen race. That's you and I. And he laid it in a new tomb, which had been hewed out of the rock. And he rolled a great stone to the door of the sepulcher and departed. We know the story. Three days later, King Mary and the other Mary, at the beginning of dawn, to the sun, that same stone that was rolled and sealed there, the angels rolled away. Don't seek the living among the dead. He's not here. Mary, Terry, she waited, Brother Doug. Where is he? It's Charlie said it this morning. God's there, even when we don't feel it. But I think too often we're like the others. What God wants us to be like Mary, to tarry, and to wait for. Her, her tarry, her waiting, it paid off. She was sobbing as she saw what she perceived she thought was the gardener of the beautiful garden where, where the tomb was. But when he spoke, Mary, Rabboni, He's alive. He's alive. Tonight I want to paint a fresh
fresh picture in your mind of who Jesus is and what he's done for us. Tonight I want us to gather in. And in a very special way, I want us to partake of the Lord's Supper.